Anna. It is a pleasure to be here at this organisation's Fringe event. I have to say it's grown considerably from when I used to organise these Fringe events. I don't know what that says about my organising capacity, but I, I essentially grew up in show racism, the red card. I was an education worker for this organisation for about six and a half years and then I became the manager of the North East Education Team. It is a phenomenal organisation and, and, and many, many times people get confused that it's just about talking about racism in sport and of course that's very important but what show racism the red card do is open up spaces with young people to talk about racism in every sector of society so they go into schools and i did this for years and years and years they go into schools and have conversations with young people in a really safe and non-judgmental way about how they see the world and of course those conversations, very often, what came out of them were deeply held stereotypical views about minority communities and uh, racism emerged as well. And, and what we were able to do in that space was to unpick those racist ideas and attitudes. Not, you know, by being overtly party political, because of course this is a charity, but there was a huge amount of political education. Young know, people would often say things like, well, immigrants get £7,000 when they come in the country uh, and of course would explain in tender loving detail how difficult the immigration system is in this country that there are no handouts for immigrants that you might see somebody who is not white uh, running a business but that person has worked for it they've not been gifted it by anybody uh, and you know young people would talk about how disproportionately uh, it wasn't white people who ran their shops in their mind, their shops, you could see the language with one of entitlement, one of being gifted this, and not seeing any agency on behalf, on behalf of those communities. So it was immensely important that we unpick those stereotypes. And as somebody said, get it out of their brain before it gets to their heart. And with young people, you can certainly do that. And some of the work that Show Racism, the Red Card did, working with people who were attracted to the far right, was immensely important because those young people were inspired because of their deep discontent with the system to some of those far right leaders, some of those people that, that exploit the worst of human emotions. And it was our job to say, that actually this country is not an easy ride for immigrants. Immigration contributes a huge amount to this system. But I think as well in the Labour Party, we have to be very clear, and I was never comfortable with this argument myself, that it's not only okay for immigrants to be here if they are serving people, if they are contributing over and above to an economy, that we defend freedom of movement as a right in and of itself. in those conversations that actually with a non-judgmental attitude, not saying well, you should know this by now, you should know how the housing system works or the immigration system, you should know the contribution of migrants, you should know that there's a political class out to exploit your deepest worst fears. Actually, we just had very non-judgmental conversations which elicited a change in attitude. And young people at the end of some of those workshops would say things like, I cannot believe how much I have been manipulated. I can't believe the way in which I just believed everything. But even my dad said, I would say it's okay to absolutely love your dad but disagree with them uh, on some of the, the things that they might, might believe. And I think I'll just say this about the two fine men uh, that I am in between here. I think, uh, Tan, you were an absolute hero in your take it down. <laughs> from you and I was absolutely blown away. Speaking truth to power, the actual definition of it, you know, bring it, you know, bringing him to account for his racism was a heroic act and I know many communities appreciated what you did that day and I, from the bottom of my heart, I'm in awe at you actually for what you did on that day. And I'm today 
David, for all of the work that you've been speaking up for the Windrush generation and for those uh, people who are abhorrently by this system and I'm sure you'll you'll talk about that. I was also in awe. I sat next to you in a Westminster Hall and thought, for, for God's sake, how does he speak like that? It's so, so, so amazing, so powerful. But it makes a difference having people like this in powers of responsibility. It makes a difference what Boris Johnson says in his racism. We saw that racist incidents spiked against Muslims when he made those comments. I saw in the workshop the hundreds of hours that I spent with young people that when something happened nationally, there was a direct response locally. And whatever your views are were on Brexit, the day after I had a workshop when the, uh, the nations decided that all you know, there was a, a, a majority vote to leave the European Union and a workshop group said to me, listen, it doesn't matter, you don't need to come here and talk about racism anymore because we're leaving the EU and they'll all be gone. <laughs> you can see that the interpretation, the interpretation, how the far right had manipulated that, how they had made it about immigration, seeped into the consciousness of young people. And I'll say this, I am currently Shadow Secretary of State for Employment Rights and there will never be a time when I am, hopefully, we're going to make it happen, Secretary of State for Employment Rights. There will never be a time when I will blame immigrants for the exploitation of the... of wages because it is not immigrants who are a threat to the minimum hourly rate of pay. It is exploitative bosses that do that, who seek to undermine those national agreements, who know they can divide communities between the migrant workers and the British workers. That has to come to an end because every single worker in this nation will be valued by a Labour government. We will call an end to exploitation for all workers and we'll do that through sectoral collective bargaining. So whether you're a Polish worker or somebody from Conza, you will be on the same pay terms and conditions and that will be enforced. No more will there be a race to the bottom in terms and conditions. And never will we, you know, use the rhetoric of the far right and the hard right or blame immigrants for what we know are deeply complex societal ills. That in my community, where it has actually very low levels of immigration, we still have schools that are struggling, hospitals that are struggling, because it isn't immigrants that are a threat to the material existence of people living in this nation. It is austerity, it is a government that does not care about our communities. And actually... And actually, as I said before, we still can't proceed, in my view, with this kind of neo-colonial view that actually people are only okay here if they're serving in some way. That we have to defend people's right to live here comfortably from whatever nation they are from originally. That has to be the core of a Labour Party, a Labour Party's principle on, on immigration. Now, I'll just end by saying this. I think we are at a really dangerous point in history and we're at a really dangerous point because I have seen and I'm sure other uh, members of parliament on this panel and you know uh, you are a public figure as well Tim and you would have seen the way in which Boris Johnson has emboldened the far right. He has unleashed uh, a confidence in those people and so it is our moral imperative at the next general election not just to get all of the things that we know are socially just for our class if you like, in our movement, but to disrupt that confidence to the far right, to make sure that there is a clear and unequivocal statement sent that we are putting an anti-racist, peace-loving Prime Minister in number 10 down and street, not somebody who will divide communities for the sake of their own power, but actually bring a nation together, whether they voted leave, whether they voted remain, that every single person is welcome here, should be safe here. That is our task. That is the task ahead of us, and Brexit is important, of course it is, but we cannot, we cannot let this opportunity slip from our fingertips to put the most peace-loving man in 10 Downing Street. 
an anti-racism fighter, you know, he'd been on the streets year after year after year, to have the most diverse cabinet, the most passionate Labour government in history. We can't let that slip beneath our fingertips for the sake of every single person in this nation and, and the eradication of racism and oppression. We have to all work together in unity. I absolutely believe it can be done to elect Jeremy Corbyn to number 10 Downing Street. Friends, brothers and sisters, it's a matter of weeks away. Thank you very much.